Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to be talking about Ego Defenses number two. This is the second part of the two-part video on Ego Defenses. The first part is listed in the description box below. So if you guys like what we're doing, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And let's begin, ladies and gentlemen. All right, we are on number 11. And number 11 is projection. Projection is one of the immature defenses where someone attributes an unacceptable internal impulse to an external source. And this is very important to understand because a lot of times people get projection and displacement confused up. So let's talk about that really quickly. Projection is not the same as displacement, okay? In projection, you have an unacceptable internal impulse that you're taking out on an external source. In displacement, you have an external source that is stressing someone out and that someone isn't taking out their stress on a neutral source. So that's the difference between projection. Projection is comes internally, displacement comes externally. And the classic example of projection would be a homosexual man who's accusing another man of liking him, even though the other man is actually heterosexual. The homosexual man can't accept the internal uh, decision or the internal feeling they have of being homosexual because maybe it's societal views, maybe it's cultural, what have you. They can't accept what's happening internally, so they actually project their feelings onto another person to say that they're homosexual, even though the other person is actually heterosexual. That's a very, very classic uh, scenario for projection that you should be aware of. All right, number 12, immature defense number 12 is rationalization. And God, I know a lot of people do this. I know maybe you guys probably do it, but rationalization happens when someone proclaims a logical reason for actions that were performed for other reasons. Now, this is usually done to avoid self-blame. Guys, this is very important to understand that people who rationalize are often trying to prevent blaming themselves for what happened. So the classic, classic, classic example I can think of is when someone gets fired and they decide to say, yo, I'm glad I got fired because I was gonna quit anyways. Well, they're probably not glad. What they're doing is they're rationalizing the fact that they got fired. In reality, they don't want to blame themselves for their own mistakes because that's what led them to being fired. So what they say is, I'm happy I got fired. I was going to quit. I was going to start a different life. It's the best thing that happened to me. Nine out of ten chances are they're probably rationalizing the fact that they got fired. <laughs> Number 13, reaction formation. Again, we're still on the immature defenses, guys. Reaction formation happens when someone has a a feeling intrinsically that they're so scared of or they're so afraid of that they start to focus on the opposite of that feeling. They start to replace, you know, that way that worded off idea with something else. So an example of reaction formation would be a mother who has a child who she really didn't want, okay? And the fact that the mother didn't want the child scares her. She knows that as a mother, she's supposed to want the child, she's supposed to take care of the child and show love to the child. And the fact that she doesn't want the child goes against societal rules and that scares her. So what she does in response is reaction formation. She'll show that child a lot of love, like a tremendous amount of love in order for her to not have to deal with her true feelings of not wanting that child. That is a classic example of reaction formation. Number 14, regression. Regression is again an immature uh, uh, <laughs> ego defense. Look, we got a cat watching some cartoons. We're gonna get back to that in a second. But it pretty much is an involuntary turning back of the mature clock that we have internally. This often happens when uh, people are trying to go through a very stressful time. Many times people who are going through a stressful time, they start to remember their you know, times in earlier in life where they were younger and life wasn't as stressful. So they start to do those things they used to do back then. So maybe they start playing with Play-Doh, they start playing with uh, some video games. One example I have is that an adult who starts watching cartoons during a stressful period in their life. Uh, I know for a fact, like I started to regress in medical school because I started to watch cartoons in medical school. I watched all of the Pokemon series and I went to Yu-Gi-Oh! Just because, hey, that's what I used to do when I was young. And it was a way for me, even me to de-stress from my stressful situation of medical school and then focus on the unstressful period of my life when I was a kid. 
So that is regression. Hey, that's why I got a little cat looking at uh, <laughs> cartoons. Next, we have repression. Repression is a involuntary, you know, holding of an idea of or feeling from a conscious awareness. And this is something that a lot of abuse victims do, okay? This could be a rape victim who tends to forget the abuse that happened, or it could even be a physical abuse victim. Either way, someone who goes through a very traumatic experience, someone who goes through a very difficult time will forget the actual incident they went through. Now, it's not because they don't remember it, actually. It's not because that they don't uh, they weren't even going through it. It's because their brain's coping mechanism to get through what happened is forgetting the incident. And that forgetting is actually the repression uh, that they're having of that memory. So that's a very, very uh, good way to understand what repression is. A lot of people may do this. You know, it doesn't have to be as far as abuse. It could be even PTSD. People who have PTSD may repress their memories because they're so jarring seeing limbs and, and bodies separated that they may try to just repress those memories so that they don't have to deal with the aftermath mentally and emotionally. Numero 16, uh, splitting. Splitting happens when uh, you have someone who believes that people are either good or all bad. Everything is either black or white. There's nothing in between. They have no, you know, ambiguity. They're either, you know, it's it's one or it's the other. That's the way they see the world. And this is something that's very common in borderline personality disorder. Now, in another video, we're going to talk about borderline personality disorder. But one thing to keep in mind is that splitting is a hallmark uh, example of borderline personality disorder. A lot of people have splitting in that disorder. So a perfect example for this would be, like I said, a borderline or bipolar some person who thinks that their parents are amazing one day, the best, phenomenal, amazing parents one day, and then the next day they hate their guts, they're the worst parents ever, I hate your mom, ah, you're the worst mom ever, you know, that's someone who is splitting. Now, it has to be to an extreme and it always has to be one side or another. A teenager who, you know, who just gets upset at his mom goes away doesn't mean that they're splitting. It just means they're going through, you know, adolescence. People who split actually have borderline personality disorder and they really see the world in all good or all bad. That's how extreme it is. Number 17, sublimation. Sublimation is a... All right, so with number 16, we have completed the immature ego defenses. Yay! So the first 10 uh, ego defenses that we covered in ego defenses part one in that video, and the in this six ego defenses up to number 16, splitting, are the immature ego defenses. From now on, we're going to be talking about the mature ego defenses. So the first mature ego defense is sublimation. Okay, like I said, this is a mature ego defense and it is replacing an idea um, with a, or sorry. So number 17, the very first mature ego defense is sublimation. And in sublimation, someone replaces an unacceptable wish with a course of action that's similar to what, you know, the wish, but it's still socially acceptable. So the example, the classic example for this would be a teenager whose parents want them you know, to play football so much. They want them to make sure that they excel in, in sports. That teenager might decide to turn his attention towards debate club or vice versa. Let's say a teenager's um, uh, parents decide So let's talk, or vice versa. Let's say a teenager decides to, or vice versa. Let's say the teenager's parents want want that teenager, or vice versa. Let's say the teenager's parents want that teenager to excel in school, go to Harvard, become a Harvard educated lawyer. Now that's a lot of stress. That's a lot of you know uh, pressure and that's an unacceptable wish for that teenager. So that teenager may decide to actually channel all of his uh, energy into excelling in a, sp in a sport. That is an example of sublimation. Number 18, altruism. 
This is a mature ego defense and it's used to alleviate negative feelings via an unsolicited act of generosity. And this unsolicited act of generosity is something that gives that person gratification. It makes them feel better. And you know, if you guys watch Narcos, I have the perfect example. And that is Pablo fucking Escobar. Pablo Escobar was probably one of the best examples of altruism. He would donate generous and copious amounts of money to the poor, even though he was selling cocaine, he was killing people left and right, he was the head of the biggest cartel, the Sinaloa cartel, but he would still donate to the poor and that unsolicited generosity where people were not going to him to ask for money, he would just do it himself, allowed him to feel better about what he was doing. That's why a lot of people you know, would call him Saint Pablo and that made him feel better. That's a form of altruism. Number 19 is suppression. And suppression is a mature ego defense where someone intentionally withholds an idea or feeling from the conscious awareness for a temporary period of time. Now suppression, again, is very similar to repression, okay, with which is a uh, is a immature ego defense. But to be honest with you, it's not the same. So don't get suppression and repression mixed up. Repression is involuntarily holding that idea from the conscious awareness. Uh, suppression is intentionally holding. So this is a volunteer. This is a voluntary uh, action that they are doing. A voluntary ego defense. And the classic example for this would be a, a student who does not want to deal with the fact that she knows that her friends from college are going to drift away when they leave college. So in order to not think about that, she just throws it to the back of her mind and just doesn't consider it until later on. She's deliberately pushing away her worries about losing touch with her friends. And that is an example of suppression. She is, she is suppressing her worries. And now finally, the last ego defense. If you guys have made it this far, congratulations. The last ego defense is humor. Uh, and humor me for a second, guys. This is a mature ego defense and pretty much it's appreciating the amusing nature of an anxiety provoking or adverse situation. I don't think I need to explain this very much, but because we're doing a video, I might as well. A lot of times people use humor in a way as a coping mechanism and I'm sure you have heard the 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 most famous line ever laughter is the best medicine well yeah it could be for her you know stressful situations I know I use humor a lot I whenever there's a stressful situation that's happening I try to you know just joke about it a little bit because it helps me decompress so the perfect example would be my life right now uh, my life sucks <laughs> because I'm in medical school. It's a very special situation, but I joke about my life sucking all the time because it allows me to deal with the reality of my life sucking. Instead of me just being brought down about you know the fact that my life sucks, I just joke around about it. Now, before we end this video, I want you guys to remember that mature uh, ego defenses can be remembered with the acronym SASH. Okay, and the way I like to think about it is when you graduate college, you should probably be mature and you're going to be wearing a sash when you graduate college. So the S stands for sublimation, A for altruism, S for su suppression, and H for humor. Now with that being said, thank you so much for watching both of these videos. I know this is a doozy, it's a long one, but if you guys got through it, you know, shout out to you. And uh, yeah, now don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And when you subscribe, don't forget to hit that notification bell on the side so you can get notified every time we post. And with that being said, I'll see you guys back here real soon. Take it easy, fam.